In 2019, an upstart YouTuber by the name of Cosmodor started growing exponentially as his videos analysing films and media hit the algorithm, with amazing success, respect and friendship from fellow content creators. However, in August 2020, Cosmodor made a post detailing his acts of pedophilia, and his channel subsequently plummeted, and his reputation as one of the most respectful content creators on this site, who made good videos and never got into petty drama, came crumbling down. Fast forward to February 2021, and Cosmodor has finally decided to make his full response to the myriad of hate comments and exposed videos. Today, I'll be sitting in my spinny chair, explaining why Cosmodor should just be given the electric chair, discussing a history of Cosmodor, the allegations made against him, an analysis of his recent 90 minute response, and why he should just quit and get a 9 to 5 job at German Walmart or whatever. The Cosmodor YouTube channel was created in 2013 by Cosmo Marlin, a German man of American descent. Cosmodor began posting high quality analysis videos about cartoons and animated films, and his coverage of media, both popular and neglected, awakened some sort of longing for the past for viewers who encountered his videos. He made detailed and informative, yet entertaining 10 to 20 minute videos that were enjoyable to watch, and for the people of the cartoon community, he was a fresh new face that provided new content. Many of the content creators at the time, who were on Cosmodor's level, made content that was way too long to watch in one sitting, and now the community seems to be tarnished by low effort man children like Valskybum64, and controversial figures like Mr. Enter, and even Butch Hartman to an extent. Cosmodor's rise brought new attention to the community, and overall gave it a new face. Cosmodor only started making videos in 2018, a full five years after he had made his account, but within his first month of uploading, he had all thousand subscribers. By June he had 9,000, by October he had 50,000 subscribers, and in January the guy hit 100,000 subscribers. His sub count was growing exponentially, and throughout the rest of 2019 and 2020, Cosmodor worked on perfecting his craft and sharpening the quality of his videos, with the majority of the uploads of his averaging 1 million views. These videos weren't about some episode of some common show that some creator really loved, but it was more discussing failing films with harsher criticism and obscure facts about popular shows. To put it simply, Cosmodor was doing as good as you could do on YouTube. At this point he was appearing on podcasts with some other large content creators, and even editing for Saberspark, who is probably still the most respected channel in the cartoon community. And at this time he even started hosting shows for Nickelodeon and Channel Frederator. This guy was on top of the world and it's obvious that his growth continued the way he was going. This man would be very close to 500,000 subscribers, or maybe even more. So how on earth do you throw away a once in a lifetime opportunity like this? Well. Let's find out. By June 2020, Cosmodor's sub growth and the channel had flatlined. His views were going down, and his social blade looked less like the path to the top of a mountain, and more like he'd been ironed and flattened with a steamroller. But things were about to get a lot worse, because his sub growth slowing down wasn't his only concern. In December 2019, Cosmodor posted a tweet talking about his relationship with a 15 year old, admitting and apologising for his actions. Early this year, I started dating someone four years my junior. I was 19 at the time, they were 15. We were only texting and never met in person. I never even had a vote of them, but that's not an excuse. I knew it was a bad decision, but I didn't want to admit that to myself. I've made a lot of poor choices this year, but this one has been eating me up the most. I tried breaking up with them multiple times because I knew it would end up hurting them. And that's exactly what happened. I feared the thought of being alone too much to make the rational decision. I'm extremely sorry for what I did, and I advise you to not be like me. Now initially, anyone who saw this probably thought it was a very fucked situation and it was it was a fucked situation and by now you're expecting him to just leave youtube for a bit and make his mental health better if anything it was a lucky escape as this post never really got a lot of attention and cosmo was let off the hook for something that was incredibly dodgy so what does he do six months later a he stays quiet about the situation and continues making videos b he stops making videos and seeks therapy c he makes a detailed community post about his predatory behavior pick your options now the polls in the top right you know you got you got 10 seconds <laughs> On July 29th, 2020, either out of guilt or sheer stupidity, Cosmodo wrote a very long community post about how he had extensive sexual relationships with a 15 year old. Compare the December post to Cosmodo dipping his foot into the grave and now imagine this post in July being the equivalent of jumping into the grave and filling the grave back up with him inside. Many of his friends denounced him and cut ties with him, and rightly so, as the entire art community turned against a member they had held so much regard for. Salty DK Dan and Rebel Taxi had both been friends of Cosmo via Discord and had talked to him, and they publicly expressed their disgust at Cosmodor, whilst Pie Guy Rules and Monster Review were disappointed to see someone who had been a podcast with them go down this path. The hardest hit was probably the aforementioned Saberspark, who had worked with Cosmodor and even had some of his videos edited by Cosmodor who immediately unlisted all the videos they worked together on and shamed his former friend, rightly so. 
It's fair to say that this post was a nuclear bomb on Cosmodor's reputation, as all of his peers learned of his actions, and pretty soon, the commentators would be able to get a sniff of the situation as well. Daft Pina soon released probably the most definitive video on Cosmodor, picking his actions apart one by one, and putting the entire situation into an easily digestible 10 minute video, throwing into the mud even more with the aid of Pontus Sprocket. Through their connections, they were able to find out a lot more. I'm sure you've all seen it, but just for a little refresher, here's some info I've missed out on that deserves a little spotlight. Between February 2019 and July 2019 was when it happened with additional info being Cosmo's birthday being sometime in May and usernames being in June. So 19 and 15 became 20 and 16. But at the very least, they never met up, right? Technically, yes and no, as they had planned to meet each other at Momocon 2019 with reference in this DM, as well as this separate one here. Although they weren't able to meet up, Cosmodor expressed interest in seeing them next year, but what stopped him from flying out to see the miner? Buying a gaming PC. I can't believe this is the first time a video game saved a kid. Side note, interesting that Cosmodor would fly to see a miner without seeing a picture of them first. Sure. On the parents' side, also mentioned in the DM, it wasn't until usernames' parents were told about the relationship until any meeting was planned. This is a good time to bring up the app Mealy, something Daft and I didn't know about until gathering research, is that Cosmo tells username his mother had an 18-year-old boyfriend when she was 14 with a similar situation with a friend. It could be speculated that for Cosmo himself, the relationship that they had seemed normal to him, and so he might not have felt too bad regarding it. Aside from those tidbits and big bits, it's a little disheartening to see the half-truth written within that post as hiding these small aspects shines a different light on the situation. As so many of those defending him most likely wouldn't agree with what he did if he introduced the fact that he actively tried to see the miner, but also that he grew up in an environment where this was normalized. Looking at Cosmodor's community posts, it's very easy to see some of the manipulative language, even if you're not a psychology major, and it's just the small details that really count. I mean, come on, take this paragraph. As far as whether it got sexual, like I said, we never met, and neither of us wanted it to be sexual, but we did exchange Rule 34. It was meant to be a joke between but that's no excuse. I won't try to downplay this aspect. It seems fine upon first read, but he uses the word Rule 34, which is just an internet slang for porn, and by using Rule 34 as a buzzword and a replacement for the world pornography, He's just playing on the fact that in reality, he sent porn to a 15 year old, but he doesn't want to blatantly say that, you know? Reading between these lines is what reveals the ugly truths of the words of a gaslighter. And even in itself, this paragraph shows that he's a hypocrite because he says he's not going to downplay these aspects, but the same paragraph substitutes pornography in Rule 34. Rule 34 is something that people think is more meme and therefore all fine, but it's still pornography and you still sent pornography to a 15 year old. There's a distinguishable difference between saying you sent pornography to a 15 year old compared to I sent Rule 34 to a 15 year old and Cosmodor knows this so he tries to use it and other techniques to edge his audience to his side bit by bit. Now in the Daft Pina video Cosmodor actually did see the video and tried to justify his actions by talking about an environment he was in and decided to share some pretty revealing information in a now deleted comment. I realise my words don't hold much weight to them anymore but I didn't want to just abandon my channel and leave. Whilst that's more respectful to everyone I've let down it does also feel cowardly so this is everything I will say on the matter. You can choose to believe what I say here or you can choose not to. I know I'm not being owed anything. One, relationship with this kind of age difference were always normalized around me. Within my friend group alone, 13 female, 32 male, 15 female, 20 male, 15 female, 27 male, etc. So whilst I knew it was iffy from the start, I didn't con honestly consider the chance I'd break up with username and considered myself it would eventually check out once they turned 18. However, that does not justify the way I treated them whatsoever. It's incredibly terrifying to hear that Cosmodor has friends that are more than five years older than him and they date people who are 19 years their junior because it just shows the insanity of this guy. I'm sure that normal people will notice how bad a 19 year difference is in any country regardless of upbringing. This is far less than your environment affecting you. I know even your mother was dating someone four years older than her when she was 14, but if you can't cut off a friend who was dating someone 19 years younger than them, then your moral compass is just broken in so many ways. Rather than vindicate Cosador, this comment threw the ashes of his reputation into a buzzsaw, and you later realise this because he deleted it thereafter. The glaring issue with Cosador's response is that all the way from his community post, up to his channel deletion, and his comment on Daft Pina's video where he revealed he has friends who had similar relationships, Cosmo has been trying to play it off like it never was as bad as it really was, or that it was more of an accident than anything. It's imperative that someone understands what they did wrong before they apologise for what they did. Now we're going to end this segment here, but before we do, I think it's pretty important that I tell you what Cosmodor actually did and give you kind of context, because I haven't really brushed upon that, and that's probably because Cosmodor did some pretty vile shit. In December, Cosmodor's victim, Halloween came out about her experiences with Cosmo, and this video is very heartbreaking to watch, you know, throughout the entire time, 
Pastel's distress is audible as she talks about what she had to go through and almost breaks down in tears at points in the videos. Now, I can't really do the video justice here. I'm someone who naturally portrays entertainment, occasional jokes and information rather than kind of sympathetic, emotional and serious down-to-earth experiences. But the video is in the description if you want to have a look because I'll only be picking out the key points here. 1. Cosmo knew Pastel Owen's age the entire time as he stated that he fell in love with her before they even met, finding her through a copying Kitty Dog video. Pastel was 15 at the time, and she had a higher voice that would imply she was even younger, and Cosmodor supposedly fell in love with that voice. Cosmo made an entire plan to get his friends, including Alice Mark, to talk about Cosmo to Pastelloween, like he was some sort of 7th grader who couldn't muster up the courage to ask someone out. Eventually, after all the pressuring and pestering, Cosmo asked Pastel if she wanted to be his girlfriend, and she said yes. Keep in mind she was convinced Cosmo was the one for her, and that she had never been in a relationship before, so she had no experience. Cosmo claims that he was extremely lonely and desperate to be with anyone. My closest guess would be that this is either a manipulative lie, or actually what happened because it seems like pedophiles like being lonely with women their age so they go down lower to people who will look up to them. 3. Cosmo sent drawn pornography to Pastel before and during the relationship, yet justified it by saying that she sent pornography first when he had the responsibility during the relationship and probably should have taken all of that responsibility to stop her from sending it. Cosmo, a 20 year old, had a crush on Ellis Mark. Mark was 16 at the time. Cosmo repeatedly stalked Pastel months after they broke up, forcefully trying to apologise, making disc adults, contacting animation industry artists that she knew looking through her stuff before she even met her, making sock puppy accounts to follow her, and stoking paranoia to this girl's mind. He really was a stalker and a creep. I think it's important that people have to give respect to the victim, even if they're doing like a video that's based on information or comedy. And as much as I make these jokes to distract from the situation, it's important to remember that this guy did some terrible things to an innocent girl who didn't deserve this. At the end of the day, I don't want to convolute the message, and from time to time, we need to be reminded about the severity of the situation. Now I'm going to take a break and I'm going to let my friend Wacky TV take over for a segment. Enjoy. So I'm sure you know by now that Cosmodor is not really the best person on the planet. What you probably didn't know is that he deleted both his Twitter and YouTube account. Many people like myself have speculated that this was done so he could stop people unsubbing. Because once the story was out, people obviously were unsubbing from his channel. Around three months ago at the time of recording this, Cosmodor returned to YouTube after being silent for a long time. His video responding to the situation is now deleted and unfortunately I don't have it. But I do know in that video he was using the environment he lived in as an excuse for being a predator. I also just want to clarify that Cosmo lives in Germany, where the age of consent is 14. He also never met the girl in question, but he did state that he exchanged Rule 34 with her. To me, it feels like he was trying to justify it by saying it's Rule 34, which, if anyone doesn't know what Rule 34 is, don't don't look it up, please. The FBI will come for you. Here, let me risk my life by showing you the definition. Here are the messages that were being exchanged on Twitter, and as you can see, there do be some Rule 34. Cosmo also asked the girl what her tolerance level is. Nice one, mate. <laughs> Epic. I also think that Cosmo didn't think there was anything wrong with the concept of dating someone this young because he states on his YouTube channel that he generally wanted to be of this person. When I dated the person in question I knew that something like this would happen of course I, I never expected it to be kept a secret forever um, but that didn't matter to me. Being with them was so much more important to me than whatever internet fame could bring me and that kind of still rings true. But at the same time, he knew what he was doing was wrong. Because in these Discord messages, it is shown that he says it can be considered creepy. And to be honest, this is the only time I can agree with him. It's also worth mentioning that Cosmodora has been uploading again to his YouTube channel. Although his two most recent videos aren't really his normal type of content. Where his second news video being the anime that predicted 9-11. And the latest one being So I Found My Old Hard Drive. Which, when you think about it, is a bit weird because it's just a, a little meme of someone saying come. <laughs> What is this? Come. I don't know if this is just irony, but due to the allegations, I, I don't think this was appropriate, to be honest. He also, on January 30th of 2020, started disabling the likes to dislikes on these videos, but he didn't disable the comments, which I find to be rather weird. <laughs> Hello, I'm exactly six days into the future and Cosmodor has actually disabled the comments on his videos. All the videos that I mentioned before that were actually disabled with likes have also been disabled with comments. Naughty naughty Cosmodor trying to hide from criticism. Now on my own little personal conclusion to Cosmodor, I think he knows deep down it is wrong for what he did. Otherwise he wouldn't have made a confession on Twitter. Even though the age of consent in Germany is 14, I think consciously he knew what he was doing was wrong. I get that it comes across that he may think it's all normal because he mentioned because of the environment he was growing up in and how it made him think the way he does. Wait, 
Hang on guys, Cosmodor is innocent. Wait, you think I'm lying? Check this out. And also wasn't in the right mindset to where I could properly explain myself. So I chose to only come back once I felt as though I could show you meaningful progress and know that I wouldn't make the same mistakes again. Boom! Innocent! Alright, see ya baby Cosmo. Ladies and gentlemen, if you thought things were bad enough before, they are about to get a lot worse because we are going to have a look at Cosmodor's most recent response to the allegations and we are going to absolutely destroy a 17 minute video with facts and logic. On February the 21st, 2021, Cosmodor made a video basically responding to everyone. Now before we even get to the video, are these even the best clothes for responding to being called a pedophile? Like out, out of everything in your wardrobe, you decide to pick one that makes you look like you're a jock coming out of high school, which is coincidentally where his sexual interest lies. I said before that I wouldn't talk about this again, and I really wish I could have been true to my word on that, but the rumors just keep on piling up and I still get death threats for something I wish I could have been able to put behind me, and I really needed to take a step away from it all to fully realize how ridiculous everything is. Uh, accused. Interesting use of the word accused there, because, um... You have not been accused. These are not allegations, these are confirmed. You had a relationship with a 15 year old and you admitted to it several times. So stop trying to gaslight your audience. As you may know, I live in Germany and age of consent laws are a little different here than they are in the United States as you're not considered a child anymore when you turn 14 and that's the environment I grew up in. I've had people in my high school dating 15 year olds when they were 19, just like my ex and me. My mom dated her 18 year old boyfriend when she was 14 and no one ever batted an eye on that. And that's the fact for most of Europe. But um, I hate to break it to you pal, but she, she lives in America. And finally, I can talk about the age of consent in my country. Despite popular belief, I'm not German. I don't live in Germany. Cosmo's intentionally being vague to not disclose my location to imply I also live in Germany, but I do not. I live in America. Now, since I don't want to dox myself, in my state, the age of consent is 16. When we started dating, I was 15. And during the time that we were still together, Cosmo turned 20. I eventually did turn 16 during our relationship, but this was late in and we broke up a short while after that and going back in and out of being in a relationship. So in the context of the place I was living in, I was too young to consent. And this transcript from a video was uploaded a year ago and it still applies today. By not mentioning her location or even her age, you're manipulating your audience. And still, that doesn't explain the fact that you didn't at least bat an eye to the fact that your friend dated someone 17 years younger than you. It just perplexes me. Someone who analyzes films for a living didn't know that dating a 14 year old was wrong in some way. Which is a lot of fancy talk to say I was entirely within my right to have a sexual relationship with someone of that age. Okay, first of all, you are not within your right to have an online sexual relationship with a 15 year old who is in a different country where the federal age of consent is 18 and the state age of consent is 16. Now, I'm not completely certain what international laws there are between online relationships, and I really don't have the patience to read through the entire Declaration of Human Rights just to disprove a point from some cartoon guy from YouTube, but I'm pretty sure that you were not legally or morally in your right to have an online sexual relationship with her. And secondly, you didn't have a sexual relationship with her at all. You are a pedophile. You are a nonce. You are a perv. Now, because I knew American sensibilities are a little different, I did try to keep my relationship a secret because I really didn't want people accusing me of being a pedophile. Oh, okay, so you know that dating a 14 year old be looked down upon and so you decided to make it a little secret. Chances are, if you think other people are gonna accuse you of being a pedophile because of a relationship, you should probably end that relationship. I never exchanged nudes with anyone. I never had any sexual conversation besides weird Rule 34 shit you can find on most every Twitter timeline. First, he said he didn't send any nudes. No problem with that. There's no evidence to show he did send nudes, so I'm gonna believe that he didn't send any nudes. Secondly, he says that only weird Rule 34 is exchanged, which is an interesting way to say that you sent a 15 year old pornography. I've said this before in the video. And then you try and generalize sending Rule 34 to a kid by saying that it's on everyone's Twitter timelines. When I can safely say, I haven't seen any Rule 34 on my timeline unless I'm searching for it. And the Twitter timeline is also a very different place to direct messages. Yo, it's post editing Toastify here. I just want to say something that I realized. Let's say Cosmodor actually gets that kind of stuff on his timeline, or at least from your experience, he gets that kind of Rule 34 stuff on his timeline. I mean, some of it is very weird, and one of it is Shotokan, so... 
I don't know, do you get, uh, if you get lollycon and shotcon in your timeline, that says a lot about you, doesn't it? Literally nothing happened, and I'm still being called a danger to kids, or that I'm trying to lure in fans by making cartoon videos, which I'm pretty sure only stems from the belief that just because I make videos on animation, that means all my fans are underage, when you can simply look at my analytics and realize that is not the case. As someone who's done YouTube for four years, this point infuriates me, and it's the most stupid point in the entire video. Every YouTuber knows that age analytics are are not directly representative of the age of their audience because many kids lie about their age or use their parents account to watch YouTube videos. I used to lie about my age to watch age restricted videos and it's very clear that others have the same ideas. If you really want a representation of your audience, look in the comments. Cancel culture is gross. Paris Hineker gets rumours, community defends him, Cosmodor rumours leaked, death threats pay people unsub, rolling eyes emoji. Hey Cosmodor, just wanted to let you know that I believe you didn't groom anyone, that I support you. I had no idea of getting all this bad press, which made me wonder why there was less content than usual. However, knowing what you've been going through and understanding that you made mistakes that you regret is why I support you. I, like many other people, make lots of mistakes that you regret. For me, some of them are literal spilt milk issues that aren't a big deal to most, but feel like the world is crashing down on me. I know I'm not perfect like everyone else, but I do believe that forgiving others in your heart, even if they had nothing to do with what happened in the past, is better for everyone than to spread hate and discord without straight facts slash understanding. I'll be praying for you, your mental recovery, and hope you gain success for your own provisions. Whatever you choose to do on YouTube, may it be blessed by my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Keep your head up, you're not alone here and have a great day. Smiley face. P.S. Down with cancel culture. American logic. This is illegal in America. Sure, it must be immoral. Um, lucky, lucky color blue, I guess, right? Yep. Uh. <laughs> Yo, can you guys shut up? Just let the, let the guy make videos, you know, if you hate him so much, stop giving him views. Hey. Uh, something, uh, something bad happened. Um, and, and I need to apologize for it. A child. No. Cool video. I'm still in shock that they added KS's Filipino song. I really appreciated your opinion. Hi, I have a bag at my face. I'll watch it at cinema apps and websites for free. She freely hates Orkafina and likes the music. Basically the opposite for you. Ignore the clout chasing comments, Cosy. Keep being you. Can't everyone that hates Cosmo or just leave? I mean, you give traction on his video. And if you have nothing nice to say, say nothing at all. I think I've made my point perfectly clear. So there's that. As far as me being a groomer goes, well, I already said before that it's not a fair term to use and it did nothing to change anyone's mind, so let's look at the definition, shall we? Child grooming is befriending and establishing an emotional connection with the child and sometimes the family to lower the child's inhibitions with the objective of sexual abuse. Child grooming is also regularly used to lure minors into various illicit businesses such as child trafficking, child prostitution, cyber sex trafficking, or the production of child pornography. I didn't really want to play the definition game, but using Wikipedia, a place where things are a lot more complex and not monitored by experts, is less reliable than if you use a definition from a reliable organization that deals with child abuse, such as the NSPCC in the UK, which defines grooming as when someone builds a relationship trust an emotional connection with a child or a young person so they can manipulate, exploit, and abuse them. Oh, but that's not your definition, you know, you want to sh shape your definition so it's, uh, so you're the innocent one. You should have a relationship with yourself and a 15-year-old using other YouTubers. You sent Rule 34 to this 15-year-old, you studied their posts on social media, you said you and her would be a cute couple, and even in your confession, she said, and I quote, no one like he ever met in real life, with amazing talent and skill and sense of humor, reminiscing about the nice times you had with her. The, yeah, the nice times you groomed her and you plan to fly her out or fly out to meet her. Now in my opinion, that sounds like grooming. But let's say it isn't grooming, let's follow the Wikipedia de definition. We, even if we follow the Wikipedia definition, that still doesn't change the fact that you preyed on a 15 year old. People call you the wrong thing, that doesn't change your actions. I could read out the entire list of insults for a pedophop of brass eye, and it wouldn't change any of your actions. In all my conversations with my ex, did I ever make any sexual advances toward them? Well, those are the words coming out of your mouth, you know, the same guy who's changed the details in his confession multiple times and made different apologies. They themselves had an NSFW Twitter account at the time, which led me to believe they were overage. I even have my age plastered all over my social media newgrounds and DeviantArt specifically. Now, although, although Password Owen has deleted most of our social media, I managed to find in some new ones. I just typed in DeviantArts.com slash and looked into the Wayback Machine, and you can see even on her deviant art, it says her age. Get to know me. I'm a cringeworthy 15-year-old girl. 
Now granted, I did learn of their age eventually, and in hindsight, it would have saved me a whole lot of trouble had it just backed away at that point. But from my perspective, living in a country where the age of consent is as low as it is, I saw this as a consenting relationship between two people, and since even their mom was okay with us dating, I stopped questioning the age difference after a while. Man, first of all, you fuck the mom, and also you can't use the mom an excuse. If someone's being an irresponsible parent, then you can't really shape yourself and say, oh, I'm right because they're wrong. Hello, it's post-editing Toastify here. Uh, you really can't get rid of me. I just wanted to explain my point here because I felt it was a little diluted. But I was, what I was trying to say is that just because another adult is acting irresponsibly does not give you the pass to then uh, act irresponsibly as well or act just as bad. Uh, and it looks like and if it looks like Cosmodor is shifting the blame to the mother of Pastor Loewen. Secondly, I refuse to believe that people dating 14 and 15 year olds is common culture in Germany. Especially when the actual age of consent is 16 at any age, whereas you can date a 14 slash 15 year old if you're under 21. So I don't see how you can still blame the environment when there isn't something wrong with Germany, it's something wrong with you. Remember the 19 year difference? There's a reason I highlight this point so many times, because it's fucked! And yet, the internet keeps misconstruing it as a groomer victim scenario, when by that logic, you can say the same thing about any relationship with an age gap like the one we had. You essentially manipulate and emotionally damage them, which believe it or not doesn't happen in most relationships. Relationships. And also she was underage, whereas most other age gaps are probably overage. So um, yeah, th there's that as well. I hate that I have to bring this up so much. This is not a comfortable topic for me, and I am in no way excusing my country's laws when it comes to that, but please, I ask that you try and understand where I'm coming from. Oh, don't play yourself the victim. Oh, come on. I'm not comfortable with this, guys. I'm the victim. Fuck off. Also, you're then blaming your country's laws when the girl didn't live in America, she lived in Germany, and Germany's laws are exposed except for normal people. I feel like I'm on a record going over round and round and round again. And frankly, it's a bit narrow-minded to disregard other countries' cultures just because that's not how you grew up and came to see the world. Once again, she lives in America. You can't tell other people that they don't don't understand the German culture when your victim wasn't a part of and didn't understand the German culture because she didn't live in Germany! I wasn't actively seeking out minors. I was interested in my ex because they were talented. Their age was a concern for me at first, but I genuinely thought it would work itself out once they turned 18. Ah yes, you liked them because they were talented. You know, just to be clear, at the time they had a high-pitched voice when making average to below average drawings and making poop jokes. And that's not me insulting her, that's her own words by the way, that's her own words. Don't go throwing around the term groomer all willy-nilly either. I've had people compare me to people like John Kay, like actual genuine predators, because a poor decision born out of a different worldview due to cultural differences when I was still a teenager is totally the same thing as a 40 year old man being in a sex relationship with a 16 year old. Groomers do not have a defined age, you're misrepresenting your critics. A 19 year old dating a 14 year old is not nearly as bad as a 40 year old dating a 16 year old, but both are still wrong. You're distracting from your point by making a false and exaggerated equivalence. From here Cosmodor starts to go into a bit of a moulding, unhinged rant, you know, about society or something I, I don't really care. He does address stupidity and lies from the art community, which is fair enough, you know. People saying he grew up the girl when they never met up. People saying um, the art community got the girl's age wrong. People can be criticised for that. But you're generalising your critics, like saying, oh, everyone did this, when clearly not. There were, There's a lot of videos that did it right, and those are the popular ones, and you should address those. There's still more to break down, by the way. So this whole narrative that these commentary channels are spreading, that I'm some kind of predator because I wasn't a good partner, is really fucking disgusting. I was suicidal, it's put me in a mental hospital, I had to start taking antipsychotics because I couldn't handle it all by myself. This didn't need to be mentioned. You, I'm sorry that your mental health was affected, but including a response video makes you look manipulative to your fans, like you're using your mental health to make your fans and critics feel sorry for you. Every single person I've ever known on this platform has turned on me. And that's not because they don't agree with my actions or genuinely think I'm the things I'm being accused of, but because they want to protect their precious brands and know that if I genuinely tried to groom someone, it wouldn't look good on them if they were to keep associating with me. But I didn't groom anyone. Not everything's about brands. Maybe it's just the fact you nonce on a kid. Consider that! Consider that! Spamming the comment sections of videos I spent months of my life working on, sending me death threats, saying I'm a danger to kids and that I can't get back on YouTube. 
That's cancel culture. People would rather see someone fall than to see them get back on their feet. People don't want to see you get back on your feet because there's a large belief that the same pattern of behavior could happen again. And in a hypothetical universe where everyone gives you your channel and audience back, people are fearful that you could abuse someone again. You have that power and you've done it before. If you've done it once, people will think you will do it again. This is where I'm gonna end the analysis. I would go on with the video more and more, but a lot of it is just pointless waffle that comes out of this guy's mouth talking about therapy and apologies and whatnot. Cosmodo's video was a terrible response. Nothing like the lukewarm apologies from months prior. These were just some awful points made from a guy clutching at straws for his career. If I had to give the best advice, I would I'd say what everyone else is saying, you know, leave the internet. Cosmodo is no more. You know, you, you got let off of being jailed, so you know, get out once you can and live a no get a get a normal job and live a normal life. You're not in a register, you haven't been doxxed, which is fucking lucky for you. So take that look, just go live a normal life without YouTube. I, I, I understand it's difficult to go from YouTube to a normal life, but your reputation is not savable at all. You need to leave for your own good and for the good of others. For a successful YouTuber, career-ending allegations are more stressful than most because the evidence is accessible across the internet and people know your face and what you've done. It's not the cancelling that hurts, but where disgraced YouTubers turn to after they've lost their livelihood. Back in 2017, commentary YouTuber Zaptai was accused of pedophilia. Obviously, today with hindsight, we know the allegations were paper thin, but back then people believed them and went over in waves to harass Zaptai. Zaptai left YouTube in 2017 and because he dropped out of law school to pursue YouTube, he was now stuck working at Chipotle. And even then, people still doxxed him and tried to get him fired. YouTubers have no choice for other jobs apart from 9 to 5 fast food joints, and thus they try to upload in order to blot out the hate like Mini Lad or make a final bid for their career like Kiwis. And I can see the same thing here with Cosmo. Cosmodo's response is his final bid for his career. This is a desperate man, and I don't even think he has a chance to shake it off. Not because of his size, but because of how infrequent his upload schedule is. Unless he completely changes his content to favor frequently and blot the haters out with a barrage of videos like Red Kiwis, he will have to accept his fate. And even then, Kiwis is surrounded by 12 year old fans who don't fully understand the extent of what he's done, whilst the art community surrounds Cosmodo with more maturity. Cosmodo can live. Unfortunately, he will not be jailed for his actions, but he will not be allowed on the internet again as a public figure. He can continue life, but not as Cosmodo. A life ruining mistake can never be corrected, and I think threaded within a case like this is a tragedy. I have no sympathy for Cosmodo, but his tail is one that looks hopeless. Like a struggling and dying worm, he'll keep trying to dig through to the surface, the light at the end of the tunnel. But one way or another, he'll stop. Another online groom has been exposed, it's good news that being exposed as they are now tarnished and kids have been warned to stay away from them, but even as a public figure, they, they can't come back and will miss their content now. Feels like something has been wasted. I'm not saying Cosmodo should come back. I'm just saying it's a shame we lost him in the first place. <laughs>